Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. I'm Joe and behind me right there is the budget overlanding Land Rover LR4. That's a tongue twister. Overlanding Land Rover. But yeah, that's what it is. And today we're going to build a roof rack. Well, it's already built. We're going to build that roof rack so we can mount our rough country rooftop tent so we can go camping. It is a no weld, all aluminum, 8020 T slot roof rack designed by us. So it's got to be great. <laughs> but now I want you to stick around for the rest of the video and watch how we assemble this guy. So we have the basis of our rack laid out here. This is all 8020 extruded aluminum T slot. We got our corners our various pieces of hardware, corner caps, so we can make it nice. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all this, get this guy roughly bolted together so we can kind of lay it out on the top of an LR4. We might use this one, this isn't what it's going on. But being it's in the shop, we'll kind of lay it out on that one and go from there. So it is starting to be something here. Um, we're gonna get the corners put on now. And these are just loosely in there. Did the braces on each of the four corners. And then the flat aluminum plate on the bottom for the cross rails, the tent will go on two of those. Uh, do the corners now. But we went with the nice angled T-slot. More finished looking than if we would've just did the square profile on the whole rack. So the outer ones are the angled and uh, we're gonna get these little corners bolted in there now to sure everything up and then we can kind of tighten some of this down but we won't lock it all down until we get it on top of one of the Land Rovers and see where we need the crossbars to clear some stuff because we'll have the three mounts on each side to get it bolted on. So the nice thing about these little corners here is they are indexed into the T-slot and some holes in the T-slot. So that will naturally square everything up. So the outer perimeter on this guy will be all square once we bolt these guys in place. And then we can do our measuring for the crossbars and get those lined up where we need them. So pretty simple process actually. These guys are nice and tight now and in the place where they'll be. I also, throughout the rail, installed some more T-slot fasteners and just cinched some bolts in there so those will stay in place and not rattle. But that is for future accessories. But now what we need to do is get these crossbars set into place. But first we need to see whereabouts the three mounts on each side will be to mount it to the Land Rover. So up here, the LR3, LR4 has threaded holes in your roof rail area. We are going to measure these out and make sure cross rails don't interfere with them. And then we can lock those guys down, get this thing set up top here and see what kind of standoffs we need to make and bracketry to get our aluminum rack mounted up. And if possible, we're gonna try and land it so this rear bar sits right in between the tailgate and the GPS antenna up a little bit so we clear both those while the tailgate is open. Not sure if that's gonna work for sure, but that's what we're shooting for. Thank you. 
All right, so now we are on to making our brackets to mount this guy to the actual Land Rover. And what I have here is I pulled the plugs out of the roof rail sections. They are these guys, little Christmas tree plugs. Most of them come out and break like this, so I'll have to run a drill bit down to get the threaded holes cleaned out. And then these are just six by one bolts in there. And I have, let me thread that back in there. And I have one in each of the six mounting holes we are going to use. And they are in there so I can measure. Um, just to get an easy measuring point across. So the width from the front to the rear of the Land Rover shrinks. So we just want to get that measurement so we can make our individual brackets the correct length. So at the rear, about 43 even, 44 and a quarter, about 45 and a quarter. So then we're gonna go from our mounting points on the rack itself here, which is gonna be the center of this rail. You can see the threaded bosses there to the center of this rail over here. And we are 49 and a half. So that brings us over to my high-tech post-it note with my measurements. So rear 43, middle 44 and a half, front 45 and a quarter. And if we're at 49.5 overall, the rear needs to be three and a quarter inches from bolt hole to bolt hole. Middle two and a half inches from bolt hole to bolt hole. And the front two and an eighth from bolt hole to bolt hole. And for those mounting tabs, I have a chunk of two inch by 3 16 inch flat bar steel that we will cut our tabs out of. All right, so got our little mounting brackets all made up. There is six of them all together, three different lengths. We're gonna get these loosely bolted up on here. But man, kind of a pain to make it in the old school way. We have a five by 12 CNC plasma table sitting in storage that we've had for many years. So when you have access to that and you have to just like cut and drill by hand and then sand them by hand man first world problems but either way we're gonna get these on test fit it we got eight millimeter bolts going to this and then we got our 70 millimeter long six millimeter bolts that'll go to the land rover right over there and we got some spacers to make up the height difference so we're going to test fit everything after that we'll uh Coat these, probably do some like truck bed liner, something tough. So, I'm here by myself. I'm gonna attempt to get this thing up on the LR4 by myself. It is aluminum, so it's nice and lightweight, but I'm a small guy. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully we don't break that glass roof. But if we do, at least we're gonna catch it on camera for you guys to laugh at me. I put some towels up here to protect everything, so at least there's that. All right, it is sitting up there. Got a couple blocks of wood under it now. So we're gonna center it out and get all the tabs lined up and we'll put the spacers in and kind of see where she sits. I mean, that's not correct. The roof rack is loosely bolted up there now and fits pretty decent. 
I kind of like the profile and it ended up right where I want it to be here, uh, just at the bump up top. We will probably come off that front guy with a solar panel mount, but the rest of it tucked in nicely and should work well with the tent on there. And it is sitting perfectly just above that GPS antenna in the back. And if we open up the hatch, we got plenty of clearance there, so we shouldn't have any issues with some rubbish on the hatch. Overall, I think that is a pretty decent looking rack for a no weld solution. And plenty of versatility with the 80-20 T-slots. Like I said, we got some extra ones in there for accessories. But we'll get her yanked down and get everything painted. And then we can put it on for the final time. So we got a rack and it can hold me. So there you can see that little industrial style rack in all its glory with my terribly faded paint on the roof. Guess you either have these bake the paint off or rust the frame. So whatever, we'll take paint. We won't worry about that. So all that is left to do on this guy for now is to get this roof rack tent off the 95 Classic and flop her up there. See if it holds the weight. I think it should. It held me. So it'll hold the tent. Will it hold me and the tent? We shall find out. So there is the end result of our 8020 aluminum roof rack build. And we have that rough country tent sitting on there. Fits perfectly. Um, we'll add some accessories. The solar panel just showed up today. But we're gonna do some max tracks or knockoff max tracks and maybe an awning or a shower tube. Let me know down below what else would be convenient to have if you're out overlanding for this newbie overlander. So the five foot length rails are about a perfect match for the rough country tent. Let's get up there, we'll grab her and we can rock the entire truck so she is mounted pretty well i think it turned out swimmingly and i'm pretty excited to use it hopefully this weekend right now we're going to flip the tent out and see how this thing looks all set up for camp it is extremely tall with the lr4 but we do have it in excess mode which makes it easier for a short person like myself but it's still gonna be a little cumbersome for me to reach everything. So there we have our finished product. Doesn't that look adventurous? But anyways, that was the point of the roof rack. And next up on this guy, we're actually halfway through it, is the little camp kitchen fridge dealy. So we're building the slide for the fridge along with a little single burner stove, a little portable sink, and some necessities like that that'll make this a little more comfortable on those weekend trips that hopefully we'll be able to get to take soon. But anyways, uh, if you guys are interested, we may offer this rack setup as a DIY. We'll send you all the parts needed in a flat container so you can assemble and it will be considerably cheaper than anything else on the market because you're going to have to do some of the work just like I did. So if that's something that may interest you, give us a comment down below. Let me know. If there's enough interest, we will make something happen. Looks like it's going to be either available in the silver like this or anodized black as well. With that being said, if you found this entertaining, make sure to give us a like down below. And if you want to see more Land Rover stuff, more overlanding stuff, and some builds, uh, subscribe. We appreciate it. 
We enjoy doing this and we're going to continue doing this. So make sure you are uh, in the know when new videos come out. So subscribe, notifications, you get the gist, everyone gives you the spiel. Um, but anyways, appreciate you guys watching. That leaf just fell right in front of us. That was kind of cool. But yeah, appreciate you guys watching as always. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a good night. Should I have an update on the Land Rover Discovery LS swap? We just got most of the parts that we were waiting on in. Got an LM4. Gonna slam the oil pan on that and get the engine prepped to drop in.